did not love Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, and I am far from alone in that opinion. When the game first released, it was a technical mess, and when your first impression of one of the most hotly anticipated titles of the year is this, then it's easy for the experience to be soured. Combine that with a watered-down horror atmosphere, questionable decisions for the long-term health of the Five Nights lore, and arbitrarily locking half of the game's content and story behind a seemingly innocuous choice for a first-time player, and you leave me with an experience where I liked what was there, but what was there was essentially a novelty. However, it's also worth noting that people came out of that game with a lot harsher opinions than I did. Certain glitches making the game borderline unplayable for some, cut content left over in the game files pointing to more ambitious game design decisions, and again, the nonsensical smattering of ideas that was the lore for this game, led to the overall FNAF fanbase ready to crucify Steel Wool Studios. The disappointment that Security Breach left behind was palpable, so when they announced a brand new, free DLC expansion for the game that promised better horror, I was stoked. Mainly because I knew that this was the make or break moment for Steel Wool and Five Nights at Freddy's. If this was bad, there was no coming back from it in the fandom's eyes. So now that the audience has our collective hands on the new expansion, did they deliver? Yeah. I'd say so. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach Ruin puts us in the shoes of Cassie, a young girl whose friend, our base game protagonist Gregory, has called for help from the bottom of the Freddy Fazbear Pizzaplex. And from the outset, you can tell how different the entire aesthetic is from the base game. After Security Breach, the Pizzaplex has fallen into complete disarray, and the cool comforting 80s vibes that permeated throughout the place originally have been replaced by a dusty atmosphere with a thick layer of dirt and grime over everything. And this is a huge step up. Security Breach tried so hard to establish a comforting atmosphere. It was cutesy, Freddy could always show up and protect you, it was horror for kids. Family friendly, yada yada. But because of that, in my opinion, misstep for the base game, when all of that comforting aura is ripped away from you, it creates the ultimate sense of unease. I am obsessed with how genius this maneuver is. It's a play that's only as powerful as it is because of how watered down the horror was in the original. It takes one of the biggest criticisms of the base game and allows for it to be a unique strength for the DLC. It's so smart. However, the 80s aesthetics are not completely gone, as the main gameplay gimmick of this DLC is given to you in the form of the Vanny Mask. A mask that allows you to enter a virtual reality world that is positively brimming with all the nostalgia-fueled vaporwave landscapes you could possibly imagine. In practice, this mask is used to bypass certain obstacles, hide from animatronics, and destroy security nodes. But if you wear it for too long, then this guy begins to come after you. And that right there is the main gameplay loop of Ruin. Go to an area, seek out the security nodes, and destroy them, oftentimes while dancing around the animatronics that inhabit that area, with brief bits of lore and fan service sprinkled in here and there to make it a more cohesive experience. The best thing I can say about this moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is that it makes the player meet the game on its terms instead of vice versa. The base game of Security Breach and the glorified hide-and-seek that the gameplay manifested itself into was not my favorite thing in the world. With so-so AI for the animatronics, a wealth of hiding spots, cameras that I could look into at any time with no punishment, and if all of that fails, an invincible suit that I can hop into to take me from point A to point B, Security Breach felt like it had too many tools available to the player. If you played your cards right, you were basically untouchable as Gregory, and the game knew that, because in order to balance the difficulty, the game would cheat and have these bots that essentially teleported the actual threats to your location if you got caught. And on top of that, the game also made you manually save, so it was less about survival for survival's sake, and more so survival, or else I'll have to do that entire area again because I haven't been given a save point since the last one. Ruin, thank god, introduced auto-saving, so this is no longer an issue. What a novel concept. And while it does have a similar teleporting mechanic, with Blue Trap over here alerting bots to your location if you keep the mask on for too long, you have far greater control of when you have the mask on than you do being spotted by these search bots. With no Freddy and no built-in hiding spots, making your way to each security node is a much more risky endeavor. But without having to find a way to punish these safeguards, it's also a much more forgiving one, which makes the overall game experience that much scarier. We've all been there. Five Nights at Freddy's loses its punch once you get jump scared 
a few too many times, and with this game making it easier than ever to stay safe, the impending dread of getting caught is amplified. It sounds backwards, but it's true. The enhanced fear factor also plays well with this game's much more linear experience. Security Breach thrived on its huge open world that they had built, and while I love open world games as much as the next guy, Steel Wolves dev team really thrives in these more tightly wound experiences. There's less collectible items, less exploration, and far less danger, but it's a much more compact experience, with every area feeling like it was explored to its fullest potential. There's no odd man out here, everything feels like it shares equal importance to the overall story. And speaking of that story, I've been avoiding talking about it in too much detail because, let's be honest, that's what most people care for in this fanbase, and they'll get that from MatPat or Rytoast or FunF or whatever, but I gotta say, it's very good. Five Nights at Freddy's has never really been about direct storytelling, instead giving you interesting gameplay with hints of a bigger picture for you to put back together. And to be clear, Ruin absolutely does its fair share of that. In fact, I'd say it asks a lot more questions about the overall FNAF lore than it answers, but the linear story that the game overtly tells you about Cassie and her relationship with the animatronics of the Pizzaplex was surprisingly engaging. The DLC is about finding Gregory, sure, but that plotline takes takes a backseat for most of the experience, and in its place gives you strong characterization for a few of the more lackluster animatronics from the base game. And it gives you a story that genuinely evoked strong emotions out of me. You know how weird that is? To say that I felt things because of fucking Five Nights at Freddy's? I love it! It's not necessarily a masterpiece, boiling down the story to its core elements, it's essentially an excuse to revisit all the locales from the base game, but it's really well written. And more than that, it's much better than I I expected. There is some concern breaking out amongst the larger fan base with certain elements of this story and the way that they tie into materials that are only ever overtly explained in the Five Nights at Freddy's spin-off books. But to that, I will say that I don't think any of the concepts presented here are so outlandish that if you didn't engage with the spin-off material, you would be lost. However, with that being said, if you're at all into this series, you're probably caught up on the MatPat videos, and this won't be an issue for you in the slightest. The more I think about it, the more I think that Ruin feels like what everybody wanted Security Breach to be. And that's impressive, because I had convinced myself that what everybody wanted that game to be was something that the series would never do again. It allowed the pristine mascots to be damaged and scary again. It actually gave us a conclusive story with a beginning, middle, and end. It gave us healthy doses of fan service that didn't completely restructure our knowledge of the Five Nights universe. And it did it all without making the core experience a complete slog or mind-numbingly difficult, an issue that has plagued the entirety of this series. If it's not obvious by now, I adored Ruin, and I don't think it's out outlandish to say that this is the single best piece of Five Nights at Freddy's content we've ever had. And with the movie coming out later this year, and Help Wanted too, it's safe to say that we are going to continue to eat good. See ya!